All right, well, I am pumped for this interview. I know he's not a, a fully Dallas guy. He wasn't born in Dallas, but but as a Dallas resident, it's always nice to have another Dallas guy on the pod. PGA Pro and Rising Star Will Zaltoris joined us on behalf of Gillette, which recently launched its new deodorant with a 72-hour sweat protection. Uh, Will, what was the importance of working with Gillette now? And I hear you and Max Homo are up to something on Instagram Live. What's that about? Yeah, so it's going to be super fun. I mean, uh, you know, obviously partnering with Max and Gillette, you know, Gillette's been heavily involved in the golf world for quite some time now. Um, you know, the new 72 hour protection, the 72 club, you know, our goal, some guys goals in golf is to break par, some of us to get to par, some of us never even get close, but it's always about improving. Uh, it's a pretty cool, pretty cool program. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I was telling the, actually some guys earlier that, you know, when I sat down and turned pro at my age and asked me, what are some brands that you want to align with? And Gillette was one of them. So when this came across, I was super excited about it. You're going to definitely need some of that 72 hour protection playing Tory. I, I'm pretty sure the, US, the USGA is going to be having it playing pretty beastly. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, the USGA has no get up. So that's, that's about right. Yeah. Well, this is Gear Podcast, so I'm going to start first things first with the U.S. Open. When you're talking about a major championship setup, how much are you adjusting your equipment for a major course versus, say, like week to week on the PGA Tour? Yeah, I think the big thing, uh, especially is to make sure that the wedges are sharp. You know, I try to replace, make sure I've got a 50 and a 55 degree that are probably within about a month old, and then having a 60 that I've replaced probably a week or two before I basically just kind of prime it a little bit and for the couple of days leading up and then get ready there. But really the only one that I think I'd really maybe change anything was if I was carrying a hybrid, which I don't anymore, I'd make sure that I had a long iron in the bag for the British. Um, you know, that is something that this week, uh, or I guess, I guess for the U S open, I may have to throw that hybrid in just in case, just cause the rough gets so thick out there. I mean, I, I have a hard time giving up on my three iron that I have. Um, I just, that thing is so nuclear that I just, I'll miss it. So we'll see, we'll see what happens, but I, I putting that hybrid in, especially when you've got some five inch rough is, you know, it could be the difference of me laying up with a wedge and maybe knocking one on, on like uh, six. Yeah. Six of part five. Yeah. So I I know you probably can't tell us much of anything, but we saw on Title of Social account that you and Jordan Spieth were testing new Title of irons. And I'm curious, what what's your iron testing process like when you're seeing new gear for the very first time? Yeah, you know, I think it's, um, you know, the details on irons, even though that, you know, when, you know, let's take blades, for example. I mean, everyone think of blades, you know, a blade is a blade is a blade, but the reality is like there's tiny changes that they make along the way. And it's not just aesthetics either. And so I first want to hear the descriptions and the changes that they've made. Um, you know, the second is really just, I want to make sure that the ball is coming out of the right windows, having the right spin, right launch parameters. And, you know, third is what's the turf interaction like, you know, how is it ripping through, you know, how's it ripping through the ground? Is it getting stuck? You know, are things, you know, like Jordan, for example, like he's had to have a custom uh, grind on his irons for, you know, I, he has had it on and off. I don't know if he still has them or not, but he's had to have it um, just because he, you know, needs a little bit more bounce out of the turf. So, you know, really, you know, like I said, turf interaction, kind of shot parameters and, you know, really just understanding the golf club because, you know, you can give me a golf club and be like, yeah, it's great. You know, okay, well, what, what am I looking for here? Because they're, they're just such small changes. Would you call yourself a gearhead when it comes to equipment in general? Like, do you geek out and love testing different shafts and combos and stuff like that? Or are you more of a guy who kind of finds what he likes and sticks with it? Well, so yes and no. So I actually had a three-wood shaft – up until last year that I'd had since I was 14 years old and we had no tipped way. it. A, yeah. We had, yeah, we had tipped it a couple times. Um, you know, something that Glenn Mahler, who's still with Titleist, he's, you know, crazy uncle Glenn, he's at TPI now, but when he was on the road, he'd stop in Dallas and he'd work with me when I was a teenager. And, you know, he just said 95% of the stuff that we can do to a golf ball is line locked and the other five is shafts. And so, 
something that was really, you know, I've played a shorter driver. I'll just give you kind of a quick story, but I play about a half inch short driver. And the issue that I had run into was that my three wood was just nuclear. I mean, just like within 10 to 15 yards of my driver, where if I was driving it bad, it's like the hell with it. I'll put, you know, let's go ahead a three wood. And I then was starting to have a massive gap between my four iron and three wood. And, you know, my hybrid would kind of fit somewhere in there, but, you know, having 30 yard gaps is not ideal. So we actually, I went to TPI, I guess it was two years ago and worked out there. And I literally said, I want to have a three wood that has the exact same launch, exact same spin, but I needed to go 15 yards shorter. And so we sat there and we were trying to find the right configurations and, and we ended up doing it. And we basically slowed the ball, we slowed the ball speed down, but still had the same launch and spin. So I've had to learn a lot, you know, when it comes to, you know, hot melts and, you know, waiting, um, you know, shafts. I'm, I'm, I'm a 25 handicap when it comes to shafts, just because it's been beat into me since I was, you know, younger that, you know, you can do a lot, but, you know, not as much as you can with line loft. So um, that's kind of, it was kind of, that's something that I always like telling people is like, yeah, I actually needed a three with a, needed to go 15 yards shorter. <laughs> you mentioned uh, TPI as a fellow, very skinny golfer. I'm curious to know what your fitness program looks like. And are you trying to build strength right now to kind of keep up with distance on, uh, on tour these days? Yeah. I mean, I'm, so I work with Damon Goddard, worked with him for a couple of years, see him five days a week when I'm at home. Um, we're starting to get more into the strength building phase. Um, we won't do it till after this summer. Um, you know, this summer is going to be a lot of golf for me, you know, especially when, you know, Texas heat, whenever I'm home, that's, you know, 105, the last thing I need to be doing is lifting weights and then trying to keep the same schedule that I've got, you know, obviously the other part too, is if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So we obviously need to keep doing what we're doing, but, um, you know, I definitely something that I have learned over, you know, this year is, you know, I, I work out a lot, but I do need some more reserves and no, I will not be fitting into some XL shirts like Bryson anytime soon, but <laughs> I'll definitely, uh, I'll definitely be starting to throw on a little bit more weight uh, as especially throughout the end of this year. Yeah, I'm curious about your putter. So everybody's kind of got this buzz with arm lock and we see you just kind of burst on the scene and and using mm -hmm. the arm lock technique. Talk to us a little bit about that. When did you first make that switch? How did you kind of come to that conclusion that that was the, the chosen route to go for you? Yeah, so I started using it a couple of years ago. Uh, Troy Denton was one of my coaches, put it in my hands and two weeks later, and I'd been playing some decent golf, but a couple of weeks later I'd shot 60 out at Bent Tree, which is where I play out of, or grew up playing out of in Dallas. Um, you know, I, it, yeah, I mean, I, I, I love it. Obviously it's got me, it's helped me get to where I'm at. I've really had to work at it. I mean, the speed aspect of it is not, it's not like you just pick it up and it's a natural thing with speed. I mean, you've really got to work at it and you've got to find the right weighting and find the right next. I mean, it's, it's not a, you know, it definitely helps with hitting your lines a little bit better, but I mean, I remember when I first picked it up and I was, a, I mean, it looked like a 30 handicap out there trying to get the speed right. <laughs> um, so I've really, I've really had to work at it over the last couple of years, you know, especially working on speed, but yeah, I mean, it, you know, it's, it, there's ebbs and flows when it comes to it in the media. I mean, there's some guys, you know, obviously Xander's trying it this week, you know, Billy had talked to, or Billy Horschel had talked about how, you know, he thinks that it should be banned too. And, you know, look, we're all entitled to our opinions. And, you know, I think if they were, if the USGA were to mirror what they did with, the anchoring ban, I think it would probably take guys winning multiple majors over the next couple of years um, for them to reconsider their stance. But I think, uh, I think for now, you know, that's still in a little bit of a research phase. We're I, all, yeah, God. I was just going to say, I agree with that a hundred percent. If it was a competitive advantage, everybody would be doing it. And at the end of the day, mm -hmm. still got to get the ball in the hole. I mean, all kinds of yeah. ways to do it, all kinds of different strokes out there, and guys have had success a multitude of ways. You use a pretty unique grip on that arm lock. I'm I'm wondering how, like, the, the stroke kind of feels for you. Is it all left arm? Is it left shoulder? And how did you kind of come up with that grip? So, I, yeah, when I first switched, I had it exactly like Webb, where I had the claw a lot lower 
And my issue was that my left shoulder kept working. I would back out of it just because it felt like my hand, my right arm was so much lower. And so Josh Gregory he just said like, Hey, just do something for a second. Just like try to get it to where your elbows are somewhat matching up. And let's just see if you stay in your posture better. And went on a nice little run right when we got back. Cause I started doing that um, during our four month layoff last year. And then went on that little run on the corn ferry where I was like six, four, third win. And so I just kind of stuck with it. I mean, you know, it's different. I mean, it's obviously worked for me, you know, and I think Josh, I joke with him. He's got the hardest job in the world because he's like, you know, sees me with an arm lock and an unconventional claw. And it's like, what the hell do you tell this kid? But then, you know, I go out and have days like the first day at Colonial or I make 200 feet of putts the first day and he's like well I guess just do that I mean and so you know it's it's just kind of funny but yeah I mean obviously you know I like kind of going back over a couple of years ago my goal is just to kind of understand my golf game a little better and just see what works and you know I may not tinker with equipment as much but I'm not afraid to tinker with my golf game that's for sure we're all a uh, pretty big masters fans on on this show as most golfers in the world are um, I'm wondering what it was like kind of living every fan's dream and contending on Sunday at the Masters. Was it like super pressure packed? Were you crazy nervous on the first tee? No, I thought I was actually more more nervous Saturday being in the final group just because personally it meant something more to me. Um, I could have not handled that moment Saturday and I think it would have it would have, I don't want to say hampered my confidence, but there was a very good chance that, you know, if I go out and play a nice round of golf, that it just opens the floodgates for the future. It's, I mean, you're on the biggest stage there is and you handled it your first time out. And I thought I did a halfway decent job. Um, you know, so by the time I came to Sunday and being four back, you know, look, you've grinded hard. You've, you've obviously handled a final, you know, being in the final group and, you know, being up around the lead in the major. So, you know, being four back, I mean, there's, you know, you leave nothing behind. And I think, uh, you know, starting off birdie birdie, that was, uh, that was obviously super exciting and, you know, kind of off to the races from there. But yeah, I, I try, I did my best to try to enjoy it as much as I could and try to slow, slow it down. And, and it still feels like, it's funny that it was two months ago because it feels like it was a year ago now. You play a lot of golf with Tony Romo. I'm, I'm curious what those games are like. And have you learned anything fr from him about being a professional athlete? Has he given you any sort of advice? Yeah, I mean, that's something that's been a lot of fun. Um, he's been a big brother to me. And I don't say that just to say it. I mean, he's been deeply invested in in my career. I mean, he's watched a couple of my rounds on PJ Tour Live when I'm T55 and it's completely meaningless just because he wants to see what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, I mean, we've had a lot of great conversations about, you know, the, what it's like to be a professional. He's given me stories from his football career and that have helped me. And the other part too, is that he's also so deeply addicted to golf and it's just, it's so fun to be around him. And, but the thing that's funny is that he has questions for, the game that I just don't have the answers to. Like, there's just some things that I have no idea and that helps me. I mean, I've got to go find the answers. I mean, if I don't know it, I mean, it's my job. I mean, he's out there doing it for leisure. And if I don't have the answers, I mean, I don't think I'm doing my job right. Will Zalatoris, AKA Willie Z. I know you have a uh, place <laughs> right now, but uh, we really appreciate the time. Congrats on all the success so far and keep it, keep it going. Keep it pushing, man. Yeah. Just, yeah. just want to, Throw, throw out, if you can find a Will at Will Zalatoris on Instagram. And I know you and Max are going to be talking about your big challenge on June 10th. Again, Will, thanks again. Good luck, Tori. Yeah, thanks for having me, boys.